Hi guys, today we are going to be talking about my favorite topic, the vagus nerve. Uh, if you've never heard about the vagus nerve before, the vagus nerve is the longest nerve in our body. It starts in our head, it goes through our neck, and then it innervates almost every organ in our body. Uh, vagus means to wander in Latin, and that is essentially because the vagus nerve wanders all over our body. It's connected to our heart, our lungs, our liver, spleen, and our, our intestines, everything. Um, and why the vagus nerve is so important. So maybe you guys have heard about sympathetic nervous system, fight or flight, or the parasympathetic nervous system, which is associated with rest and digest, tend and befriend. It is when our body feels relaxed and is working um, at its best, essentially. And our vagus nerve is responsible for taking our body out of sympathetic nervous system and bringing it back into the parasympathetic nervous system. It's essentially what tells our body, okay, body, it's time to relax, everything is okay, we can get back to resting and digesting, tending and befriending. Um, and our vagus nerve actually has something called vagal tone. So some people have high vagal tone, some people have low vagal tone, and this is essentially the strength of our vagus nerve. Um, the strength of our vagus nerve is correlated with how quickly we can get out of sympathetic fight or flight and into parasympathetic. Um, high vagal tone is correlated with a quicker um, return to this parasympathetic state. So if you have low vagal tone, you'll be someone who experiences something stressful and can't really get out of it. Your body is stuck in this fight or flight mode. So high vagal tone is associated with, with things like better digestion, better mood regulation, better control of blood pressure, blood sugar, um, and so many things. Low vagal tone is associated with things like irritable bowel syndrome, anxiety, depression, autoimmune disease, um, increased risk of cardiovascular disease and stroke, um, migraine headaches, so many things. And vagal tone, we all have a different vagal tone right now. It's controlled by things like genetics, upbringing, life events, things that aren't necessarily in our control. But just like muscle tone, we can strengthen our vagal tone. This is something we can control. Um, and again, just like muscle strength, it's something we have to do repeatedly. We can't just expect doing one exercise and all of a sudden we'll have high vagal tone. So I will be therefore dedicating the next several posts to ways to strengthen our vagal tone. Um, today I'm going to be starting with something called the basic exercise. This was created by a man named Stanley Rosenberg. If you're interested in learning or reading more about it, you can Google Stanley Rosenberg, the basic exercise. He also wrote a wonderful book about the vagus nerve. Um, so how this exercise works, we are going to, it's only going to take a few minutes, you can do it with me now, or you can just watch and do it later. So how the exercise starts, we are just going to take our neck, rotate it over to the left, to the right, doing this several times, observing whatever we feel in our neck, um, maybe it's tension, a little bit of pain, maybe it's nothing at all, that's fine. Next stage in the exercise, we are going to interlace our hands, place them behind our neck in the suboccipital region, which is just where the kind of end of the head turns into the neck so you'll feel a little step off. This is just to hold our head steady. Um, so we're gonna have our nose and our chin pointing forward throughout this exercise and we're just gonna take our eyes or our gaze and point them over in one direction. You don't wanna go too far that you feel any strain but far enough. You're gonna have your eyes focus on one point. Just remain here. and coming back to center, and then going over to the other side. And coming back to center. Okay, so things that we're looking for is maybe you found that you yawned, you involuntarily sighed or swallowed. These are all signs that we have activated our parasympathetic nervous system and stimulated that vagus nerve. Um, you might have not experienced any of those things. Um, I didn't this time. Sometimes I'll do this exercise and let out a really big yawn. Um, if you don't experience, when you're doing this exercise, if you yawn, involuntarily swallow or sigh, return to the center and go to the other side waiting for that uh, something to happen again and then returning to center and finishing. If you don't experience any of those things, you just wait in with your um, gaze turned for up to one minute. Um, don't experience anything, you come back to center and go to the other side. 
um, both things are um, stimulating our vagus nerve and helping helping it to strengthen. Um, you can do this uh, once a day or several times a day. Um, you can do it before going to sleep to kind of help relax you. Um, and you could also do it lying down if that's more comfortable for you. Once you've done that exercise, we're going to go back to rotating our neck to the left and to the right and seeing if we notice any changes in um, the tension in our neck or if we don't notice anything at all, that's fine too. Um, and that is it. Uh, we'll pick a different exercise tomorrow. I hope you enjoyed this one and please feel free to post any questions or comments below.